What's going on guys? Coach Madden, YouGoProBaseball.com. I'm here with my man, Hector Berrios. He was my pitching coach in the Mets organization, uh, AA, Binghamton, New York. Binghamton, New York. Taught me a lot about pitching and we're gonna, he's gonna give us some great tips today. In fact, he's gonna talk about his pitches. The four seam fastball, a two seam, and then another two, two seam, seam that it kind of transitioned to, which was uh, a pretty nasty pitch. He's gonna talk all about it, but before that, I want to tell you guys a little bit about the Pro Command Target. This is something that Hector came up with. He created, and in a day of velocity and technology, command, pitching command, control, accuracy, whatever you want to call it, is highly overlooked. And this is super important. This is actually life size, right? Absolutely. And yeah. he was telling me, uh, tell me a little bit about it, about the, you know, the two and the three as far as on the sides of the plate and everything about it real quick. Well, the dimensions is an actual catcher. I wanted uh, the visual to be exactly what you see from the mound. And the, the gloves also had to be altered to make sure that they were exactly the same size. So you'll see this glove is approximately the same size as that one. But the most important thing for me was the detail to the gloves. If, if you look at here, you have a lace. And I wanted to have the laces that you actually see from the mount if you have 20-20 vision, because there's some people that can't see this unless they have glasses on. But then inside the pocket, I have a little light coming through, and that's an, an, another place where you can focus. So you take this glove, it's like a dartboard. You have your, your, your uh, bullseye black in the middle. You choose where that bullseye is. Is it the net? I mean, the pocket? Is it the lace? And then you just go through it and aim small, miss small, like everybody talks about. But this is exactly the way I intended it because these are the things that I use when I pitched. Uh, the squatting, the, the position that he's in, I wanted it to be nice and low so I get a good visual of that. These gloves are on the inside, outside, and middle, as you can see here. So both fastballs. This will be more for breaking balls for me. And when we expand the zone, we want to let righty to the back foot of the lefty or vice versa here. We start climbing the ladder here, the top part of the zone. And now this is the window, the swing and miss window. So I just wanted to capture every location that, that uh, we as pitchers need and able to hit in order to have success. And I was able to put it in this product and I'm extremely proud of it and I know it's gonna help uh, the, the baseball and, and pitching community. Well, I love it because you could put it anywhere. I mean, we've got it set up here on this net. You could throw it on a fence. You could put it pretty much anywhere, take it out. And this way you don't need a catcher. Like if you, you know, you got guys that want to put in some work uh, and they don't have anyone to throw to, guess what? No more excuses. <laughs> you know, get you one of these and you got a, a life-size target to pitch to. So that's uh, really cool. But let's get into talking about your pitches. The four seam, uh, I want to I want to know how you gripped it and how you threw it, what mm. you were thinking when you were trying to throw it, and then the transition from the two seam you started with into the new two seam, um, and tell us that whole story because it's a cool story. Well, when I first started playing, I uh, I was drafted as a center fielder and then converted as a pitcher. Um, when I got there, I was one of those lefties that had absolutely no movement, and uh, when I got on the mound, <laughs> my balls as true as as true can be, and. Um, I had success because I, had, I was able to get a breaking ball over for a strike. So I had two pitches that at the lower levels I was able to now offset timing uh, and just locate a little bit better with the fastball. But once I got to win a ball, I became a rookie, rookie first year player playing with big league players. And I got my uh, Christmas tree lit up pretty bad <laughs> uh, with some big leaguers. And I mentioned to you it was Vince Coleman, Sid Bream, Bobby Bonilla were in that lineup, just to name a few. Uh, but the thing was that one of my pitchers, my, uh, this is what we do, we have a lot of coaches in this game that, that your teammate becomes one of your coaches as well as your pitching coach, but he told me to hold the ball off center. So again, my four seamer was just a regular four seamer, I was trying to backspin it from the outfield, and now he asked me to get movement to off center the ball. So now I'm literally not behind the baseball, I'm basically almost like in a change up position. So I got the movement, but I lost velocity. And then uh, years later, when I went to Puerto Rico uh, to play winter ball again, my coach there said, why are you holding the ball like that off center? And I, I told him the, the story about me not getting any movement. So he told me to get the slick part of the ball and use these as rails. So I was going to use these as rails. But the reason I was going to grip the ball well was because I was going to be able to get the seam. So it wouldn't let my fingers get too far down the, the slick part of the ball. So squeeze it and think about my nails getting through the baseball versus the pads of my fingers. Ah. So a lot of pitchers that throw a two-seamer have a natural inclination to get the pads that to was, come up. That was me. So he taught me to drive my fingernails through the baseball and that instantly gave me the velocity back, but the more important thing, it gave me late movement. 
So I kept getting miss hit after miss hit, ground ball after ground ball. With that little bit, it was like, now you see it, here, <laughs> now you don't, you wow. know, so. I, I, never, I never heard that before. So that, that was what worked, and that's what I teach now, and just about every single guy that I'm able to convey this grip to get that same late movement that I, that I achieve. I see it, I said, that's it, now run with it. Now, what are you trying to do? Like, let me ask you two different questions. One, what is the grip pressure? Like, how deep are you and how tight are you? Are you like holding it like an egg or is it pretty firm, pretty deep? And secondly, what are you trying to get those pitches to do? Obviously, you might even relate it to the pad, you know, when you're focusing and throwing to, to different targets. So my, my main focus was I'm squeezing it, but I have plenty, maybe from here, I have plenty of space here. But the squeezing gave me those sensors in my fingers to literally put my fingernails through it. So if I gave the right pressure to the thumb, it translated the pressure to the top, right, fingers. And now I could take those fingers with that little pressure and really concentrate on staying through it as long as I possibly could. And then when it would eventually come off, it was coming off this finger. The if, inside of this finger. If you were to squeeze it as hard as you possibly could, uh -huh. and that was 100%, and as loose as you possibly could without dropping it at 0%, what's the estimation? I'm going to go 70 to 80. 70 to 80%. So about that, because I wanted to feel, and then it started feeling like a whip. Like I knew the feeling was there. It wasn't, I was holding it loose, and I think that, and felt that if I held it loose, my whole arm would get loose, and I wanted to feel that pressure right on my fingertips. And to me, gripping it a little bit tighter, I was the same thing, about 70, 80% uh -huh. tighter. You hear some guys say, hold it like an egg. Hey, yeah, that felt that, terrible for yeah. me, especially when I'm trying to hit a spot. Like I felt, I felt like the, the grip on the ball, I had to have a good feel on yeah. it to get that good release point so I knew where that ball was going. What were you thinking with your pitches, your four seam and then your two seam when you're trying to get a batter out? Well, what I learned, I know we could use the target here. What I learned that my ball away, my I'm, I'm, my arm side fastball to the two, naturally I started at the one because now I had about, I would say four to five to six inches of movement and I could keep that movement on the plate. So the hitter sees it right down the middle and all of a sudden it ends up having room to play with and keep it for a strike. So if he decides to swing, he does me a big favor, maybe gave me a first pitch out, but more likely than not, they don't want to get themselves out. So they'll give you that pitch, they take it. I mean, you just look up and down baseball, you see the World Series, when they throw that pitch down and away, they take it early in an account. So the hitters are literally giving you a pitch to get ahead, but most pitchers don't understand that concept, and they start pitching off the plate here, getting behind in the account, when you have a lot of the plate to, to work with. I call that setting your sights. Like, I used to like to set my sights, so if I'm throwing that, you know, for me, my, my uh, sinker, you know, and I'm throwing it here, and it ends up down, yes. you know, three, then... I did a good job, but I'm not trying to throw it three no. because then it's going to end up down here. Absolutely. So uh, that's that's great. And this just gives you the visual to yes. see it beforehand. Yes. You know, because a catcher, you see the catcher, and a good catcher is going to kind of give you that visual or whatever, but not all the time. No. <laughs> so this is you get all the gloves at once you, you, so you can have that. This thing. actually came because I took a picture of our catcher, and I was training our young uh, pitchers in the minor leagues, and I wanted them to know what a good pitch was versus a bad pitch. So I started giving the, the catcher to go around the location, in, out, up, down, so we can just have something to teach them in the, in the conference room. And this, this evolved because of it later on. You mentioned in the beginning of the video that you went from an outfielder to a pitcher, but you had a really good breaking ball. Uh, that, that's what kind of got you started. Pitching-wise, you had some success. Yeah. I want to talk about that in another video. Can we make another video <laughs> talking about the breaking ball? Absolutely. And then also, you started throwing a split finger. Yes. And when I was pitching in Binghamton, I threw a fork ball, and you really helped me with that pitch. You gave me a lot of great tips that work. So I want to make another video on that one, too, <laughs> the split finger, fork ball combination type deal. So uh, we're going to see you guys in the next video. We'll talk about the curveball uh, in another video, the split finger, and a bunch more videos we're going to shoot today. Um, you can check out Hector at HLB Pitching on all the social uh, media platforms. Thank you so much for watching. Hop down in the comment section below. Let us know what pitches you guys are throwing. Uh, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much.